people who sign a contract, they know what they're signing, they have legal representation, but they'll come out after they're now celebrities and argue that this is a bad contract. And this goes across, this is not just at Bad Boy, it, you know, in the music as an industry as a whole. You know, Prince wore the word slave on his face. Every artist, Kanye West said he was a slave to his label. What's yeah. your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think, um, well, I'll talk about the music industry and I'll talk about Puff. Uh, I'll talk about Puff first. Uh, he clearly was, even in, e even in uh, uh, the midst of, you know, record labels having to sign artists and having to be contract, he was very artist friendly and favorable. Artists may never <laughs> believe that, but you know from being around, let's do the third yep, video. Yep. Let's do the fourth video. No one was doing that, you know, and no one really knew times when he was going into his own pocket to do things. Uh, so in the scheme of the music business, if there's a spectrum, he's way over here in terms of being artist friendly. Now that doesn't always feel good to the artist because it still may mean that, you know, something doesn't work out or it doesn't go as well for them as they would like. Um, but that is clear, I mean, from my being at BMG Music, seeing every, seeing 60 worldwide record labels and how they operate while I was there, and then watching how Sean Combs and Bad Boy operated, he was definitely artist friendly um, and, and, and favorable to the artist compared to the music industry. Now the music industry is based on a very simple principle, which I think we need to think about uh, going forward, which is that I want to have as much ownership as as much as I can uh, and I want as much of the economics as I can negotiate, right? I mean, that's, that's, that's ultimately what it is. And um, one of the things I've been talking about a lot is just that <clears throat> I feel like hip hop missed a very unique opportunity, right? We missed an opportunity to own our own value the right way. Um, and I, you know, easy visual way to think about it is that, you know, if you think about the movie Black Panther and, and, and uh, <clears throat> you know, um, um, you, you think about the, um, what was the, 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 the metal or whatever that they had? Oh, uh, um, vibranium. vibranium. There yeah. we go. There <laughs> think we about go. the vibranium. Mm -hmm. Hip hop really was the vibranium, mm -hmm. right? It was that value that our communities created, that people created, and Basically, what we allowed to happen was, was for the industry to divide and conquer. So let me pull this group over here. Let me pull this group over here. Let me give millions here, millions there, millions there. And then I'm going to take the 90% and everyone else gets the 10%, generally, right? And so we, you end up having this great natural resource, vibranium, and you're watching other people building great statues with it, and you're left with like 10% of it and the 90% is over here somewhere building fortunes and foundations. Whereas had we thought more collectively, right, we would have said basically this is our natural resource. You're gonna buy in at the right price. Everyone's gotta buy in through this collective and you gotta buy in at the right price. And by the way, you can only buy in, you can't really own it. Right? If you wanna own it, that's a whole nother conversation. And imagine if that ownership had been retained, if that natural resource had been re retained and you know, we built value through that. So all of that is to say is that the industry is designed, as most industries are, it's like this is their raw material, this is their product, mm -hmm. right? So it's just as I would try to go make this water bottle for as little as possible and make this, you know, so that I could sell it for as high as possible and make as much money as possible, same thing with an artist. I wanna sign that artist, pay that artist, for whatever I can, you know, w w the least amount possible, own as much as possible, uh, and make as much profit as possible. So you really do look at it as, at the end, it's, it's business. You get what you negotiate? I, I believe so. I do believe, though, there's, you know, we have to, we can't look at this without the lens of society and systemic um, people taking advantage of others systemically, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, so you can't look at it without that lens because you go back to the artists of the 50s and 60s and you see how basically a lot of black artists were, you know, hoodwinked or whatever, Correct. right? So you can't look at it without that lens. So I would say yes, but, yes, but it was also exploitive in certain situations and, and it was allowed 
to be exploited because people did not have the power or the knowledge or the ability to really um, come to the table the right way, right? Anybody who came to the table the right way was an anomaly. If you come to the table the right way and you just decide, I want to take this hundred grand, I want to sell you my masters forever, I want to take 8% going forward, if you come to the table the right way, that's just a decision you made. But if you don't come to the table the right way, and we, and, and industry and people that are known to have all, you be exploitive of, uh, of, uh, of, of a race or, or, or people that are living in poverty, then you know, that, you, I can't simply say it's just business because it's also, in some cases, exploitive. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.